In this tutorial, you'll be learning how to model, rig, and animate your very own four-legged creature. You can make it go any direction, jump, and maybe we can give it a little bit of an attitude using only Blender. So we'll be working in Blender version 2.93, and we'll start out by deleting everything and creating a plane. And this will be our leg. So go to edit mode by pressing tab and right click merge vertices at center. And now all we have in our entire scene is one single vertex. And we're going to extrude this on the Z axis by pressing E and then Z. And let's do um, four meters. So we're going to add thickness to our leg by using the skin modifier. So go to modifier properties, add modifier, skin. And now we have a rectangle. And you can't rotate or scale any points of this. You have to use control A to adjust the radius of the vertex. So let's make it pointy at the top and let's make it wider at the bottom. And this is actually our leg upside down, but we'll come back to that. So if you want to see what's going on next, click X-ray mode and then select both the vertices, right click, subdivide, and then increase the number of cuts to two. So now we have these two joints. If you press G, you can move them around and you can see that we have created bones. But right now these are still just vertices. So to make them into actual bones, we can click create armature. But this button is disabled until we have exited edit mode. So let's go back to object mode and in the skin modifier, click create armature. And now we have an armature object with a bunch of bones that are connected to our leg. So now we can access pose mode, which allows us to select the bone and rotate it and our leg will follow. And this also unlocks some incredibly powerful tools like inverse kinematics. So go to pose, inverse kinematics, add IK to bone. Make sure you have this last bone selected and then add this IK to new empty object. So now when we go back to the object mode, you can select this empty and we have a really powerful rig already. So the technique we'll be using in this tutorial is to move this empty object around in a clever way to make this other stuff behave like a leg. So to keep things tidy, let's rename this empty object to IK target. And there's one thing that we need to fix, because if we were to move this down and now you can select the armature and the leg and you can move this around by pressing G, you can see that there's a limit to how far we can move this. And if you watch this from the front orthographic view, which is numpad one, you can also use this widget and click minus Y. And now you can press G to move this around. You can see that we are limited to this area. So we want it to be in this area instead. And that is roughly 45 degrees. So you can actually fix this by just rotating it. So hold on control and do minus 45. So now we can move this around and we have a much more comfortable zone to work in. So let's make a body. Shift A, let's make a cube. Let's move this cube on the Z axis by pressing G and then Z and then let's rename this to body. And now we can move our leg and our armature just outside this and let's just give it some more room. And now we can take the armature and our leg and parent it to the body. So select the armature and the leg, hold down shift and click on the body and go object parent, which is control P. This is where things get really interesting because now we can move around our body and we can rotate it and we can move this leg and we're getting close to something that looks like an actual character. I think this looks a little bit weird right here on the edge so I want to make a fake joint. So let's go shift A and let's make an icosphere and open this menu and set the subdivisions to 4 and then right click set the shading to smooth and then we can move this on the Z axis and then place it like in the middle here a little bit, it feels more like an actual joint. Select the sphere, hold down shift and parent it to the body as well. So now you can move the body and we have this joint and we have a leg and things are starting to look really good. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to make this walk. We're going to use a path shaped like a circle. So go shift A, curve, circle, and then go to edit mode and rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis. Let's go back to object mode. Let's move this over here select our IK target, go to object constraint properties, add object constraint and select follow path and then set the target to be the Bezier circle. And now this looks really weird because this IK target has a lot of weird random location data. So let's remove this by going object clear location, which is Alt G. And now you can just increase the offset of the follow path and we're walking. And it's stretching a little bit. So let's just scale this down move it in a little bit perfect so to animate this let's go to frame 10 and then insert a keyframe on the offset value and then advance by 20 frames so frame 30 and then if you set this to 100 that's exactly one cycle so let's just type 100 
and then insert another keyframe. And now this only does one round, so to keep this going forever, you can hold your mouse in the timeline, go Shift E, and set it to linear extrapolation. And this will just make it keep going forever. Even after your animation ends, it's going to keep going. Now one problem is that this is a circle and it's not really touching the floor. We want it to walk more like this. So you can select the circle, go to edit mode and select these two control points and go to control points, set handle type, vector. And now you can, for example, click and drag on these two and you can press S to scale it up. And then you can take this bottom control point and move it on the Z axis. And if you want to be really precise, you can set the transform pivot point to 3D cursor and scale it on the Z axis by a value of zero. Make sure your 3D cursor is reset before doing that. So now we can press play and we're walking. And we can actually select this one and we can scale it up. And this is really powerful. What's really cool about this, you can actually just move this around still and it works perfectly. Okay, so this is looking good, but we need more legs. So select everything except from the body and then view it from the top view. You can use the widget and click this Z button. You can also use numpad 7. And now we're going to duplicate it and rotate it at the same time. So go to object, duplicate object, which is shift D. So press shift D and then R right away. So we're rotating it while we're duplicating it. And then you can hold down control to make it exactly 90 degrees and don't do anything else because we just made one action and we can press shift R to repeat that action. So shift R and then shift R again. And now this looks like a complete mess, but it's actually completely fine. The only thing that's the problem is that these IK targets are out of position. So we can reset their position by going object, clear, location, which is Alt G. And then you can also reset the rotation of these Bezier circles that are used as paths. So to reset this, go to object, clear, rotation, which is Alt R. And now when you press play, they're all moving in the same direction. And we have a really cool rig that we can move in real time, we can rotate it around. But now all the legs are jumping at the same time. So to make it actually walk, you can select the IK target for the first and then the last leg. And then let's zoom in on the timeline a little bit. You can see that there are 20 frames, which means that on 10 frames, they will be halfway. So select A to select all the keyframes and then press G and then move them 10 frames. And now when you press play, we can still move this around and have a lot of fun. Now what's incredibly powerful with this rig is that these four paths are controlling the direction of our character. So if you set the transform pivot point to individual origins, you can press play and then you can rotate them on the Z axis. And now we can adjust the direction of our creature. And this is just incredibly powerful. So to control this properly, let's reset the rotation and then let's go shift A and let's create an empty set to sphere. And then let's call this direction controller and then right click, adjust empty display size and then let's scale this up. So now we can select this first path and in the object constraints properties, we can go add object constraint, copy rotation and then set the target to be the direction controller. So now this will only copy the rotation, not the location. Select these three as well, hold down shift to select the first one, go to object, constraints, and then copy constraints to select that objects. So now these all have the same constraint and we can rotate the direction controller and we have a really powerful rig. But let's make things a little bit more interesting by adding some random movement to our body. So right click and select vertical split and set this editor type to graph editor. Let's select the body and press I and insert location and rotation keyframes. So now our object has object transforms for X, Y, and Z location and rotation. So select the X location and press N to get up this menu and click modifiers. So now we can access the F curve modifiers and the one we're going to use is called noise. So once you apply the noise modifier, our body is immediately start to shake. So we can increase the scale of this movement. Let's do 15 and you can increase the strength. One is great for now though. And then you can change the face if you like. And now you can copy this modifier because it's currently only applied to the X location. So copy F modifiers and then go to Y location and paste it. But now when you press play, you can see that it's going diagonally. And that is because the X location and the Y location have the exact same face. So if you adjust the face, you can see that now we're getting random movement on both channels. And this is starting to look really organic. So let's do this for the Z location as well. Let's paste the modifier and let's give it a new face. You know, let's lower the strength a little bit for the Z axis. Perfect. And now we can do the same for the rotation. So go to the X rotation, paste, but now we want to lower the strength just a little bit. So let's do uh, 0.4 is good. Let's give it a random face. 
copy, go to Y axis, face, random, Z. Yeah, you know the drill. And now it's almost as if we have a living creature that is walking in our scene. Perfect, let's make it actually walk across the screen. So let's make a new object, Shift A, Empty, Cube. Right click, adjust the empty display size and make it really big. And now we're going to call this Character Controller. Now hold down Shift while you select the Direction Controller, all these paths and the body. And now you can press G and you can just see that everything is moving. And then hold down Shift and select the Character Controller and then Control P. So now you can only move the Character Controller and this will move. Now at this point in the tutorial, if you're familiar with drivers, feel free to go ahead and add a driver for the offset. But right now we're just going to quickly eyeball it, which is also really fast. So let's move our character controller on the x-axis and then press I for insert location. Then let's move it a few frames over and then press G, X and move it over here and then insert another location. So now we're running into the same issue where we want to make this go on forever. So have your mouse in the timeline and go Shift E linear extrapolation. So now when you press play, it's going way too fast. It's sliding a lot. So to fix this, let's just have a look. Okay, so it's sliding too much. And then select one of the keyframes, press G, and then let's move it back a little bit. And now you can actually just... Wow, did I actually just nail this on the first try? Okay, so <laughs> if you don't get super lucky and nail this on the first try, that's actually quite insane. Um, you can just sort of see, okay, it's sliding too much. So let's move it this way. Oh, not as too little. Yeah. So this is just a really, <laughs> I actually just messed this up by nailing it on the first try. Okay. Now this is walking across the screen, but for the cherry on top, there's one final thing you can do, which is just absolutely insane. So let's uh, split our viewport again, go to graph editor. Let's select the Z location. See this one. Let's bring up the F curve modifiers again, and let's add a modifier called built in function. And this creates a sine wave. And now this looks absolutely crazy. <laughs> we don't want this. We want to set it to additive. So it lies on top of the noise. And we're, you can already see where we're going with this. Look at this guy going completely crazy. And I just love this so much. So we can lower the amplitude a little bit and then lower the face multiplier, which is basically the frequency. So let's lower this to point five. Let's do point 0.5 and point 0.5. And look at this, look how much character we're suddenly getting. Let's uh, lower the amplitude a little bit, increase the face. And this doesn't even have to be in sync with the legs. You're just getting so much emotion from this guy just bumping up and down. And I love this so much. So let's collapse this. So now you have a really powerful rig where you can, for example, rotate the direction controller on the Z axis by, let's do 30 degrees. And then let's rotate the character controller on the Z axis by minus 30 degrees. And you can see that this sort of goes, now it goes sideways a little bit. So now you have this cute little character walking around in your scene. Look how funny it is that he's just sort of walking across the screen like that. I really love this guy already. And it's really cool that you can just, poof, you can make it jump. And this is a really powerful rig. I really like this rig. So if you want to make this easy to use in all of your project files, you can just rename the collection. Let's call this creature. Let's go to, for example, Blender version 3.0 with the super fast Cycles X render engine. Oh, we have to save this first. And let's go File, Append, and then just find your blend file. And under Collection, you can see that you have a collection called Creature. And here it is in another version of Blender, works perfectly fine. If you want to see my attempts at these things, follow Paul if you're on Instagram. And yeah, 